What's going on guys, it is Caleb and welcome to another JavaScript tutorial. In this video we'll be continuing our objects too. So without further more ado, let's go ahead and get started. Previously we did objects and objects everywhere. And today we're going to do you down with OOP, an introduction to classes and prototype. So let's go ahead and get started. So Let's go ahead and reset our code before we get started. Class is in session. All right, it's time to learn the basics of object-oriented ori programming, often abbreviated to OOP. This is very important programming paradigm that is widely used in the industry today. Let's start by introducing classes. We learned in the last course that constructors are a way to make objects, but they actually do even more than that. When you make a constructor, you are in fact defining a new class. A class can be thought of as a type or a category of objects, kind of how a number and string are types in JavaScript. Take a look at our person example taken from the introduction to objects 1. In this case, Bob and Susan are two separate objects, but both belong to the class person. The instructions are, Make your own circle class, circle, by building a constructor for it. The constructor for circle should have one property, radius, and take one argument for the initial radius. So we would make our own circle class. All we have to do is come up to line 11 and just say function, circle, pass in radius, Open curly braces, this dot radius equals the radius of our circle. And there we go. Now we have our, our circle. Let's go ahead and try and save and submit our code. As you can see, we get the green light, so let's move on to the next lesson. And once again, let's just reset our code. So teach Snoopy. So we know how that a class will have certain properties and methods. But what keeps track of the given class can or can't do? What a class has or doesn't have? That is the job of the prototype. JavaScript automatically defines the prototype for the class without a constructor. For example, our dog constructor ensures that the dog prototype has a breed property. Remember that the dog prototype keeps track of what dog has, doesn't have, can, or can't do. We know we can add methods to objects, and in line 7, we add the bark method to buddy. Hit run and you'll see one woof printed at when buddy barks. Notice what happens when you try to get Snoopy the bark in line 17 though. Even though Snoopy is of the class dog, he doesn't know how to bark because only Buddy had bark added as a method. To fix this, start at line 15, add a bark method to or for Snoopy object. You can make it just like the bark method for Buddy, or type in whatever barking noise you want instead of woof. And to do this, go ahead and go over to line 15, and here um, we need to teach Snoopy how to bark. So. Since we already have Snoopy as a dog, all we have to say is Snoopy dot bark equals function. And bark is spelled wrong. There we go. Uh, bark. Snoopy dot bark equals function. Here we're not passing anything, so it's an empty function. We've got to have our semicolon if we do it this way. Now console dot log rough rough. Now if we call snoopy dot bark, make sure to add our semicolon to our console dot log statement. If we call snoopy dot bark, he should print out rough rough. And if we save and submit our code, you can see we got woof and rough rough. So way to go. Start the next lesson. And let's just reset our code. How do classes help us? Classes are very important in object-oriented programming. This is because a class tells us helpful information about objects 
and you can think of an object as a particular instance of a class. For example, look at a person class again in the console. We know that any person will have the name and age because they are in the constructor. This allows us to create a function like print person name, which will take a person as an argument and print out their name. We know the function will work on any person because name is a valid property for that class. Click run and notice that Bob's name gets printed. Make a person called me with your own name and age and print your name using print person name. So if you see here, we already have a Bob object and we have unnecessary semicolons here after our um, person. So if we want, we can just go ahead and delete those. Not sure why we have those, but um, <clears throat> here we go. On line 15, all we have to say, or line 16, we just say var me equals new person. Open parentheses. Within these, we just say our name. So Caleb Hutchinson. And then your age. Now, once we have our new person, we can say print person name. And we're going to tell it to print out the me object. And we go ahead and run this. We get the green light. As you can see, we have Bob Smith and Caleb Hutchinson. So let's go ahead and start the next lesson. And once again, let's just reset our code. Prototype to the rescue. Here we have the similar code as last time, but there is more there is an important difference. Instead of using buddy.bark to add the bark method to just the buddy object, we use dog.prototype.bark. Click run this time and both Buddy and Snoopy can bark just fine. Snoopy can bark too, even though we haven't added a bark method to that object. How is this so? Because we have now changed the prototype for the class dog, this immediately teaches all dogs, or dog, the new method. In general, if you want to add a method to a class such that all members of the class can use it, we can use the following syntax to extend the prototype. Class name dot prototype dot new method equals function and then our statements within our function. Click save and submit the code to move on to the next exercise for more practice manipulating photo types. So let's go ahead and just go ahead and save and submit our code. And we can get woof woof. And let's go on. And reset our code. So prototype practice. Here we have created a new class cat and its constructor. We also have two cats that we would like to meow, but currently cats have no meow method. Add a meow method to the cat prototype so that all cats can now meow. This method should print to the console meow. Then call this method for each cat. So if we just go ahead and copy this meow because we're going to need this again later. Now we have to add our method of meow. So we can just say function. Really, what we can say, we can say, um, <clears throat> if we show our hint here, when we look at our prototype again, we get the cal.prototype.meow equals function. So, or not cat, but cal. Cat.prototype.meow equals function. And all we're going to do is just console.log, paste in meow, and we add our uh, missing semicolons. Now all we have to do is call our first cat, which is Cheshire, Cheshire, uh, I'm not really sure how to pronounce that, uh, C-H-E-S-H-I-R-E -E dot meow. And now we can say Gary dot meow. Now if we run this, we get meow meow and we get the green light. So congratulations, you finished this section. And if you if this video helped you guys out, make sure to leave it a like rating. If you got any questions or got stuck, make sure to leave a comment down below. If you haven't watched this video on full screen, make sure to go back and watch it on full screen. We're using a different editor this time. Hopefully you guys will like it and hopefully um, from now on, all the videos will start coming out in 720p instead of um, some of them coming out and being in HD and some of them not. Uh, QuickTime is really stupid about that. 
but also hopefully these effects that I'm going to add in will uh, definitely make it a lot easier for you guys to see. Uh, leave your comments down below and tell me what you think about it. Alright guys, don't forget to subscribe and until next time, have a nice day. Peace.